How's it going? My name is Tyler LaBelle. I'm a C-130 Navigator in the Youngstown Air Force Reserves. I was born and raised in Cleveland, Ohio, and that's where I currently still live. I'm a diehard Cleveland sports fan, and I'm extremely excited to see what the Cleveland Browns can do this year. In the Air Force Reserves, I'm a traditional reservist, and I've had the opportunity to travel all over the world and experience some very cool places. Flying on a C-130 requires a lot of different training. However, one of the most unique things we do is train for airdrops. Most commonly, we train by dropping various pallets and bundles that simulate supplies or personnel at a drop zone near our base in Youngstown, Ohio. However, we often work with other branches by coordinating training such as dropping Army troops at jump school or Navy SEALs in the Atlantic or Pacific Ocean. With that said, the highlight of all my experiences and contacts to air power and joint operations came within the past few months when I had the opportunity to conduct airdrops in the Middle East. Not only was this rewarding personally knowing that all the hard work stateside has paid off, but also knowing that we were directly supporting joint forces and coalition forces in need. In order to make these missions a success, it took a variety of different branches working together to successfully coordinate the drops. Again, overall, it was definitely the highlight of my career in regards to air power and joint operations. Two key takeaways from course content to this point, and ones that I enjoyed most and made me think differently about air power was Foundations of Air Power, Air 501S, and Leader Development, LDR 502S. Foundations of Air Power introduced the term air mindedness. This was a term that I was previously not familiar with, but I enjoyed learning about the history and the meaning of this term, which was coined by General Hap Arnold. And although it was new to me, it quickly became apparent that we as airmen apply the principles of its meaning every day by using uh, critical thinking to solve complex problems. In lesson one of the course, the article titled Air Mindedness by Dale Hayden states, Air Mindedness is the lens through which airmen perceive warfare and view the battle space. He goes on to explain that, it is not constrained by geography, distance, location, or time. And it was explanations like these that really helped me understand the concept more completely. The other course that I found extremely beneficial was leader development. And although at first glance, this course doesn't seem to apply directly to air power, national security, warfare, or joint operations, but I would argue that it does basically act as a foundation to all of these dynamic topics. And without sound leadership, no nation or service branch can effectively succeed in any of these areas. This leader development course has complete a variety of exercises, one of which was the Who Am I exercise. And this really required us to reflect on our past and identify our strengths and our weaknesses. And as we all know, leadership is a subject that every individual has the capacity to improve on. And at times, I think we can all agree that this course helped develop us into better leaders by increasing our mindfulness and self-awareness. The course also broke down the leadership styles and approaches needed to be successful. Moving forward, I'd say the two most critical issues relating to air power in the context of warfare and joint ops would be retainment numbers and technology. To start with retainment, I think the military in general is in the process of losing a lot of high quality individuals due to burnout from the war in the Middle East, which is now approaching 20 years. Personally, our reserve squadron, not even active duty, mind you, has deployed every two years for four months, and this has been going on for the past 10 years. Prior to this, we had an even higher ops tempo. There's also been a new number of different taskings outside of these deployments, such as air advisor roles in Afghanistan, which more or less turned into an eight-month deployment. And when you factor in all the different training we need, um, a lot of people are simply burned out. And I would have to imagine that every one of you watching this video has a similar example of where retainment of quality people has been an issue in your squadrons. The second most critical issue, and one that I think is the biggest face in our military right now, is the advancement in technology, specifically cyber warfare and artificial intelligence, and how we're going to ethically and morally, morally apply these to the battlefield. I personally feel like this topic is critical to understand because I think it could turn into a slippery slope if we're not careful. Recently, U.S. Cyber Command conducted a major retaliatory cyber attack on Iran this past June after Iran shot down an unmanned drone. This is absolutely fascinating because in both these significant attacks, there was no loss of life. And this is a fantastic thing. 
However, I think these types of attacks are going to become more commonplace and the use of cyber attacks in general are going to become a slippery slope. In the introduction to Warfare Course War 501S, Lesson 2 provided us a TED Talk by Rodrigo Bijou, and he explained that conflict is now borderless, and there are no bounds, and if there are, they're digital, not physical. And I thought this was absolutely fascinating because I believe the majority of our American forces still look at conflict as being physical. And so as we go through all these rapid changes, I think it's going to be absolutely key to develop our leaders to understand how to implement and defend against drone attacks, cyber warfare, and artificial intelligence in general. And I don't think we're necessarily keen on these topics enough. So thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I look forward to the discussions that follow.